Hello and nice to be with you today for this hopefully short lecture on critical perspectives in accounting. This is our last topic for our current developments in accounting thought subject and hopefully one that you should be able to get your head around fairly easily in preparation for your upcoming exams. Slightly different from all of the other accounting theory subjects or topics that you've examined so far and we'll learn more about that as we go through. We're going to discuss the coexisting and competing paradigms in the accounting world, explain why some scholars and practitioners challenge these beliefs and we'll talk about how critical accounting and critical accounting theorists are totally different in their perspective than most other scholars and practitioners who have developed the other theories. Discuss the arguments which suggest that accounting values are contradictory to the traditional values of Indigenous peoples, and that's not just Australian Indigenous peoples, but Indigenous peoples around the world. Discuss the arguments that accounting supports and privileges individuals in society who control resources and exercise power. So, what are critical perspectives and what's a critical theorist like? Well, if you were to meet one walking down the street, they would probably be a lot in personality, like a woman that I remember from growing up, a friend of my mother's. And I can't quite remember her name, but let's call her Mrs. Crital, because that'll help you remember her. And she had big, smooth hair and massive glasses, and she didn't have a nice thing to say about anything or anyone. One weakness, though, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. So whatever was happening, whatever was going on, whatever, whomever she met, not a positive thing to say lot like critical perspectives or critical theories. It refers to accounting research that goes beyond questioning whether particular methods of accounting should be employed and focuses on the role of accounting in sustaining the privileged positions of those in control of resources while undermining or restraining the voice of those without capital. So generally the workers, unemployed, underprivileged and so on. Critical accounting theorists seek to highlight through critical analysis the key role of accounting in society and they challenge the view that accounting can be construed as objective or neutral. And we've been taught all along from the very beginning, the accountant is neutral, the accountant is objective, the accountant is just reporting on what they see in front of them. Uh, accounting is also seen as a means of constructing or legitimizing particular social structures. So we have our social structure, we have our capitalist economy. All accounting does is actually just legitimize that. So the origins of Critical perspectives, it's grounded in political economy theory, and you can read more about that in chapter 8. So growing right back to um, the, sorry, the work of Gray and others, critical research is based on the classical branch, so it considers structural conflict, inequality, the role of the state, and central to much of the research is this underlying belief that the distribution of power in society is not even, it's entirely unfair, and the way that society is structured benefits a particular elite and undermines the rest. And the degree to which you believe that might be shaped by a number of different factors. Perhaps your, um, how you see yourself fitting into society. Are you one of the powerful elite? Or perhaps the influence of the powerful elite through political systems, through the media has shaped your thought. Um, perhaps you've got other things that have shaped what your view of that theory is. Social and environmental accounting, and we'll examine that along with the critical perspectives, it's based on the bourgeoisie branch and they don't adopt this same theory. They don't consider those issues um, about the uneven distribution of power in society. Under the social and environmental accounting branch, they generally accept the way society is structured as a given and not tend to make an assumption that power is evenly spread through society. So these are the origins, the assumptions behind the critical perspective view. Where does it find its primary roots in? The works of Karl Marx, Marx. Workers of the world unite, you have nothing to lose but your chains. The owners of capital under the Marxist critique of counting are regarded as having unfairly accumulated their wealth by the historical exploitation over several centuries of the value created by workers. So basically, what does that mean? Wealthy families have potentially accumulated their wealth over successive generations by 
paying their workers less than they were worth, which in turn expanded the profits of their business, which they kept for themselves. Accounting is a powerful tool in both enhancing the power and wealth of capital and helping to protect this power and wealth from threats arising from the structural instability of capitalism. You might like to have a think about certain wealthy families that you know and whether that statement holds true for them. Certainly throughout history there have been um, families that have made their wealth from exploiting workers and you can see examples, very clear cut examples about of slavery um, in the northern part of Australia, the underpayment of local indigenous workers who worked on cattle stations for generations and were unfairly played. Often complex issues but that Marxist perspective um, can hold true in many cases. So there are other philosophers and if you're looking, if you, this topic captures your imagination and following your exams or before them you want to do some more reading, Heigl, Weber and Foucault is probably where you could look to start. They consider structural conflict, inequity and the role of the state at the heart of the analysis. Where do they think the state lies? They think the state lies with the wealthy elite. It is the wealthy elite and they tend to perpetuate um, these sorts of inequalities. And they highlight issues which may not otherwise be addressed such as social welfare. So, critical theorists. Mrs Crutal, what do you think she would think of social and environmental accounting? Look at all these wonderful things Westpac here claim to be doing. Um, we've got companies not only reporting but taking action on various environmental and social issues. Have a think about that. A critical view of disclosure of social responsibility information, a waste of effort, she says. Disclosure of social responsibility is a waste unless accompanied by a fundamental change in how society is structured. The disclosures act to legitimise, not challenge those providing the information. And if you're coming from a critical perspective, even if you're coming from a slightly cynical perspective, you can see how some firms in some circumstances who are setting their own targets for social and environmental reporting, who are then doing some work to achieve those targets and reporting on them, deciding, deciding on the scope of what they will report on, are really only legitimising potentially negative behaviour rather than challenging themselves into better levels of activity. So further to that, as accounting is deemed to sustain particular social structures, introduction of new forms of accounting will only help to sustain that social system. It only supports it, it doesn't really fix anything. Consider that the disclosure of corporate social responsibility information again acts to legitimise and not challenge those providing the information. And they also consider it's a wasted effort to use accounting to solve problems in society because one is using the very process that caused the problems to try and solve the problems. <coughs> what can that be compared to? It's like saying this is we'll use war to stop war. So the critical theorists who don't believe that accounting is a particularly well-structured or valid way of recording company profits, they don't think the capitalist system is an appropriate way to structure society or the economy, don't believe that accounting can fix any of those problems. So accountants are complicit in supporting the powerful elite at the expense of those who are not quite so powerful. So the role of the state, and by the state, what do we mean? The role of the government, of the country, of the area that we are. It's seen as a vehicle of support for holders of capital and for the capitalist system as a whole. The government will take action to enhance the legitimacy of the social system and social disclosures are seen as a means of pacifying challenges against the capitalist system where corporations are given many rights and powers. The government does not operate in the public interest, but in the interests of well-off groups. And you can see how that links back into some of the other theories um, that you were studying about influences on regulation. They're not operating in the public interest, only in the interests of well-off groups. Why? Two main reasons. One is re-election. The secondary one is potentially the additional perks that some government officials might get by virtue of their position. 
So they might be accepting bribes, um, influencing decisions that profit them and so on. And this is something that you can see around the world and it's certainly not unknown in Australia with certain um, issues in the New South Wales state government recently about various ICAC inquiries, Independent Commission Against Corruption, where certain politicians were um, approving mining licences and purchasing assets that related to those mining licences um, and expanding their family wealth to a great level. So what are we saying there? It's acknowledging that the government in that case, not operating in the public interest, but in the interest of well-off groups, in the interest of the politicians themselves. So the role of accounting research, again, Mrs. Critique again, accounting researchers seems as providing research results and perspectives that help legitimise and maintain certain political ideologies. The anti-regulation stance during the late 1970s and 1980s matched the views of government on the time. The rise of political, um, sorry, positive accounting theory, consistent with political views at the time. The rise of economic consequences research seems to have been motivated by a desire of large corporations to counter attempts to change reporting systems and lever, levels of disclosure. So by supporting this theory that the market will solve everything is very contrary to the philosophy of the critical theorists. Research efforts into inflation accounting were seen as being motivated by a desire to alleviate shifts in real wealth from owners to higher wages, not by the rate of inflation. So what did they want to do? Make the profitability of the firms seem lower so there wasn't the pressure for the business owners to pay higher wages. So what is the role of accounting research? Now, in Australia, our um, universities are funded generally by student fees and by government subsidies or government grants. In the US, the colleges and universities, they are heavily reliant on business funding. Now, do you think large businesses who are in a position to make substantial grants and donations to universities would be supportive of the critical theorists? No. What major multinational company would be looking at putting forward money for a grant, a research grant, or support academics, accounting academics, to research critical theorists who are in turn going to turn around and say, the capitalist economic model is flawed, multinational corporations are exploiting the environment and exploiting their workers. Not happening. So, what do they think of conceptual frameworks? Again, I can see her now, her bouffant hairdo, her big glasses, shaking a finger, not approving of anything. Except she had one, exa one exception, Mrs. Crital. She had a son called Minard, and the son shone out of him. And I think he could be seen to be much like the um, much like a communism model. You know, she just saw that if everybody was like Dinard, the world would be a much better place. Critical theorists see conceptual frameworks as legitimising the accounting profession and of financial reports produced by reporting entities. Accountants are seen as imposing their own views about what performance characteristics are important or not important. And what do they really measure? Financial reports only really focus on the numbers, only really focus on profitability, on debt, on money, rather than looking at some of those other softer issues. So in communicating reality, accountants simultaneously construct reality. What does this mean? If accountants communicate that profit and numbers are the only important thing about business, the business world, they are really only going to stimulate a view or construct a view that these things are important. And critical theorists see the adoption by the profession of corporate social reporting as harmful, as it gives the impression of concern and change without any real change occurring. So the issues explored by the critical perspective, what are some of the issues that accounting influences? Gender issues, the exploitation of labour, the, the view that market forces um, can be relied on to sort out issues and the conversion of everything into a commodity, the need for regulatory protection, wealth transfers and Indigenous issues. So are we all equal? 
And how does the critical theorist view um, relate to, or can it be used to explain some of the issues in the Indigenous world? Now we're not talking just about the Indigenous peoples of Australia. Many countries across the world, very prevalent in Asia and um, in the in the Americas and in Africa, have their own Indigenous people. And unfortunately what draws many of these Indigenous peoples together is their lack of social advantage compared to the rest of the population of the country they live in. So Greer and Patel in 2000 wrote an article which is quite interesting to read uh, and they were talking particularly about the Australian Indigenous people and suggested that attempts to dissipate or reduce social and economic disadvantage by the imposition of financial accountability measures on Indigenous groups is unlikely to deliver fair and social economic outcomes. Why? They were saying the ontology, the beliefs of the Indigenous people in Australia are so very different from the beliefs that sit behind our accounting uh, and profit and business structures that it's unlikely to develop deliver or result in any sorts of fair or social economic outcomes. These things aren't going to work. If we have businesses set up in Indigenous, remote Indigenous communities and we're looking to those businesses to make some sort of profit or return on investment, it's unlikely to work because the values of profit aren't particularly held very highly by Indigenous communities. The values of one person, success, at the expense of many other people, or one person's profit at the expense of many other people, is not really going to work in that sort of a community. What is important? Community, relationships, supporting family, um, a much broader view of family. Everyone's a brother, everybody, every, every woman's a sister, we're all cousins, and we all have a responsibility to one another. So Greer and Patel also criticised the Holstead Grey model, which we talked about in international accounting, but acknowledge, not acknowledging that within different countries we have many different cultures and we have to look at the effects of these sorts of accounting measures on different cultures and how they might affect different individuals. So a big muscly person in a tight singlet, you don't really think of accountants is powerful, do you? But from a critical perspective, they might appear neutral and objective, but theirs is a hidden power. So accounting legitimises current social and political structures of an organisation, of the capitalist system, and so on. If you want to read a little bit more of this, there's a good example in your textbook, um, General Motors, on page 551, about how that plays out in real life. So, things to have a bit of a thought about, a bit more of a think about. If, could you consider financial statements objective and neutral from a critical perspective? Would a critical theorist think that they're objective and neutral, even though everything that we've learnt up until now is all about the objectivity and neutrality of financial reports? So have a think about that one. Now, what is the criticism of the critical perspective? Critical theorists are often marginalised to a greater extent than others. What does that mean? When they go to conferences, they probably stand in the corner and nobody talks to them. Why? With accounting, it's all about finding a solution, isn't it? With management accounting, it's all about finding a solution, fixing the problems, providing the adequate information to make decisions. So, critical theorists, it's inconsistent, isn't it? The critical theorist is just pointing the finger at the problem but not really finding a solution. Um, so communism may be an alternative to a capitalist model. We've found over time that it hasn't played out very successfully for individuals or for countries and economies as a whole. It's also very critical of accountants, so therefore it doesn't get a lot of airtime, I suppose. It doesn't get a lot of attention, it doesn't get a lot of further um, discussion about it. So just to recap, you should be able to discuss the coexisting and competing paradigms in the accounting world, explain why some scholars and practitioners challenge widespread beliefs held about accounting and its function in society. 
they explain why these critical theorists challenge the mainstream ideals and the mainstream philosophy of capitalism and accounting, accounting and its role in supporting that system. Discuss the arguments which suggest that accounting values are contradictory to the traditional values of Indigenous peoples. Again, that was the capitalist value or the capitalist value of the individual and the success of the individual and the focus on profit and those perhaps softer traditional values of Indigenous people, more about communities, more about the land, more about country, not so much about individual success, not so much about financial achievement or profit. And discuss the arguments that accounting supports and privileges individuals in society who control resources and exercise power, often at the expense of those with little power, with little capital, that perhaps are only um, in a working role or, or in a role they need to be supported um, by the state. So I hope that's of some help to you and at least a little bit of a snapshot. You will have to do some further reading on this topic. And if you do, it will round out your understanding much better. So thank you. Bye-bye.